Welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. Day four at Gakogura, the halfway point of the course. Each day so far has seemed insanely long, but looking back on it all, the course is going very quick. So very much looking forward to seeing what's in store today. It's been a couple of days since we've handled the bags, so I've been very upset. But luckily, first activity of the morning is to flatten these out. As much as I enjoy prepping these cloth bags for sake pressing, Today has a major highlight in store for our own special brew. All our work so far has been leading up to this, the start of the Sandanjikomi the three-step method combining the shubo yeast starter with three additions of koji, steamed rice and water. This all takes place over the next four days to form the full moromi mash that will be left to ferment for a few more weeks. I love the smell of steamed rice in the morning. It's all hands on deck to get this 72 kilos of steamed rice onto the mesh and start cooling it down. Sandanjikomi is fundamental to the brewing process. It gives the yeast time and space to grow and do its work, converting sugar to alcohol. The first stage is called the Hatsuzoe, combining the yeast sauce, called the Shubo, with the initial mix of koji, steamed rice and water. The second stage, the Nakazoe, adds about 30% to the mash volume. And the third and final addition, the Tomezoe, adds the remaining half. We remove the koji from the fridge where it's been chilling for a couple of days and deliver it to the fermentation tank. This is the Hatsuzoe, the first edition of koji, then chilled water, and finally today's steamed rice. We're adding these ingredients to the yeast starter we put in the tank yesterday afternoon. The koji makes up about 20% of the total rice mix, but 15% is the legal minimum. So that's the first edition of the all-important koji, done. Next is the chilled water, but not just any old tap water. This is super clean, filtered water from a special tank. The order of ingredients is important. The chilled water brings down the overall temperature of the tank, which has to be around 10 to 11 degrees Celsius before adding the steamed rice. After a few buckets, the mixture has to be stirred with a kite or paddle. Shimakura-san is doing kaiire, mixing the yeast starter, koji and water. This is the level in the tank so far, with one more ingredient to go for the first stage addition. This is it. The culmination of the Hatsuzoe, the marriage of the Koji and today's steamed rice finally coming together in our tank. Yes. 
satisfying splash. Fantastic. We're well on the way to making some delicious sake. We're about to go and separate some of the big lumps of rice in the tank. Just been told not to fall in. As I climb the ladder, Tomoyuki cautions me not to touch the dirty platform we're stepping on. Right now, we are witnessing one of the greatest things about sake brewing. This is the view at the top of the ladder inside the tank. The thing that sets sake apart from almost all other alcoholic beverages. It's called multiple parallel fermentation, MPF. The diastatic enzymes in the koji mold break down rice starch into sugar, while the yeast ferments that sugar into alcohol. Saccharification and fermentation are taking place at the same time in the same tank. Brilliant. So I'm doing some paella now. We're breaking up the big crust of rice. We're just making sure that everything is evenly spread within the mash. I can feel these lumps and I'm breaking them up. Very well, if I may say so myself. Over the next 48 hours, the yeast and the koji do a dance, the odori, weaving their magic until the second edition. お酒作った酵母が少ないので量が薄まって雑菌とかが入ってお酒がダメになっちゃうので少しずつ仕込んで量を増やしていって酵母を増やしながら雑菌が繁殖しないように3回に分けて仕込む作業みたいです。More polling of the mess. And that's a wrap on the morning of day four. We're now off to see something very special. And that something is Obata Shuzo's main brewery in the small seaside town of Manon, 20 minutes drive away. We've been invited to see the projection mapping at Obata Shuzo. I'm really excited to find out what that's all about. For select days in the summer, Obata Shuzo run a projection mapping, allowing people to visualize the sake making process. It's a very cool idea and really helps me understand more about what's going on inside the fermentation tank as we do the three stage preparation for our own mash back at Gakogura. And now it's time to taste the good stuff, a flavor that's evolved for over 100 years at this brewery. This is the Manotsuro Dai Ginjo. It's their speciality in the free tasting. Kanpai. I am in good hands being taught how to make sake by these guys. This is absolutely fantastic. It seems the world agrees. This is an impressive number of export destinations. There's also a paid tasting here. 500 yen gets you a choco and three coins to try some of their more rarer premium sake. I'll absolutely be back later to buy more of this sake goodness.
After sampling some great sake, a long break affords me time for another island adventure. Rice is grown all over Sado, but the most famous spot is Iwakubi Shoryu Tanada. We snake around dozens of sharp hairpin turns all the way up to a viewing platform. Located in the Iwakubi area in the southeastern part of the island, these steep terraced rice fields fan out over the mountain slopes and stretch over 350 meters high. The rice paddies here have been passed down since the 1600s and about 460 paddies still remain, stretching to the summit of the mountain like a dragon rising high into the sky. This spot is absolutely breathtaking. I tried to take in as much inspiration as I could before the hour's drive back to Gakogura. Gorgeous vistas and some close calls are par for the course on these island roads, all part of the Sado adventure. We're back in the Muro doing the intermediate work, the Nakashi Goto, mounding and separating our koji rice into small trays. This is for the Tomezoe, the last addition into the fermentation mash. Toji Nakano goes around with his orange scoop, equalizing rice volumes in each tray. Once that's done, it's straight back into the shikomi room to attend to our mash. The maintenance guy's here trying to fix the cooler and he reckons it won't take much longer. There's more kaire to do, mixing of the hatsuzoe. Stirring helps the yeast to grow and keeps a constant temperature in the tank. Some bubbles starting to appear around the edges. I really enjoy doing that, Kaira. Lots of fun. So that's a wrap on day four. Except it isn't, because we're going to be back here tonight for the Shimai Shigoto. And in the meantime, I'm up for even more sake experiences. There are five sake breweries on Sado Island and the smallest is Henmi Shizo. Henmi-san graciously took us on a short tour of his kura. He makes some incredible sake, including his flagship brand, Itaru. He was happy to share a drop. I'm enjoying an 11-year-old Daiginjo here with the president of Henmi Shizo. Henmi-san, come on. これ何ですか。これ。22B を It's 8.30 p.m. on day four, and we're back at Gakogura. This is the final mixing of the tomekogi. Ooh. 
we've just been told to aerate the rice and if we see any clumps to separate them. It has a texture like Rice Krispies at the moment. And obviously because it's now 41 degrees, it's a lot warmer than it was this afternoon. You can really sense the respect that Toji Nakano and all the Kurabito have for the rice as they handle it with great care. After flattening the rice, he measures the depth. It should be about two knuckles. He continues making fine adjustments, equalizing the rice volumes. We use our fingers to make troughs in the rice to help increase the surface area in contact with the air. My extensive experience playing in the sand on the beaches of Devon comes in useful here. After creating our Zen garden patterns, we cover the trays with mesh cloth, not blankets. We want airflow into the trays and this mesh cloth is breathable. The tomikoji will be kept at just over 40 degrees Celsius for another eight to 12 hours. This guy is still trying to fix the cooler. He's been here since the morning. Good to see Kitano-san giving some moral support and possibly some electrical wiring advice. We also check in on the tank. Now, during the day, the yeast has been hard at work. We have to perform more kaire, using the poles to push down and mix the ferment so it's even. I think the yeast is enjoying itself. The mash is more energetic, bubblier and frothier. It's currently at 9 degrees Celsius in the tank. We all do our fair share of the kaire. This is a round-the-clock effort. There are all sorts of processes that happen overnight. It's why the kurabito often sleep in the kura. Coming back this evening gave me a real appreciation of the commitment that's required to produce every single drop of sake. That's a wrap on day four. Exciting to finally see it all coming together. Coming up on day five, prepping for the nakazoa, sake filtration, and sampling the yield while our mash dances in the tank. Join us, making sake on Sadov.